Imagine having the best baseline rally of your life where you're hitting amazing shots, you're moving your opponent from one side of the baseline to the other, and finally you get that easy sitter in the middle of the court only to make that frustrating mistake. This is one of the most common problems at the recreational level where players have a difficult time putting balls away. And in today's video, I'm gonna explain why so many rec players struggle with putting balls away, but it's not only that. I'm also gonna tell you what you need to do to finally start putting balls away. And there's one word that's gonna put everything in context, and that is trajectory. So what you need to understand is that trajectory is the most important factor when it comes to putting balls away. And I'm gonna give you an example of a shot that has the most favorable trajectory when it comes to putting the ball away, and that is the overhead. And I want you to think of it in the following way. When I hit an overhead, I can hit it at a very steep trajectory, meaning that the angle is going to be severely down so that when the ball bounces, it's gonna be so high, it's gonna bounce right over the opponent's head. And that is the easiest way to put the ball away. Now, when I say it's easy to put away, I understand that a lot of you guys at the rec level struggle with overheads. Even some professional players struggle with overheads. And the simple reason for that is that most players don't practice the overhead enough. So what you need to do is build the right overhead technique with all the fundamentals that you need for the overhead. And you simply need to incorporate hitting overheads into every practice session. Now, how about balls that are not over our head, that are lower? Well, here we also have to think of the trajectory. And let's take volleys as an example. The hardest volleys to put away are the ones where we hit the ball with an upward trajectory. In other words, when we have to bend down, hit the ball below our waist, it's going to be very difficult to hit the ball straight. It'll hit the net and naturally, will have to hit the volley with an upward trajectory. The easiest volleys to put away are ones that can be hit with a downward trajectory. If you remember the Bryan brothers, the greatest doubles team in the history of tennis, they tried to hit every volley with a downward trajectory. They would get so close to the net with almost their nose touching the net and they would hit put volleys away with a downward trajectory because that is the easiest way to put the ball away. Now, this is not something that's easy to do because it requires you to close the net very aggressively and to have great footwork and great timing. A lot of you guys at the rec level will have a hard time with closing and you allow a lot of balls to fall below your waist on the volley and now you're forced to hit up. So just like the overhead, you have to incorporate more of these type of volleys into your practice sessions where you're working on closing and hitting the volley with more of a downward trajectory. If you don't practice these shots, you're likely not going to use them in a match situation. But now let's move a little bit further back in the court and talk about how we're going to put balls away that are bouncing around the service line. And here, the most important factor again is the trajectory of the ball. So if you allow the ball to be very low, and sometimes you don't have to allow it to be low, sometimes it is low by design, for example, if you're returning a slice, but in any case, if the ball happens to be low, now you have to hit the ball with an upward trajectory. Now, this is not as big of a problem as it is at the net because here we can apply topspin. However, here comes a big caveat. Because we are so close to the net, we're also closer to the other baseline. And when we apply topspin, the ball doesn't have a lot of room so it can fall inside of the baseline. So even if we apply a lot of topspin often, the ball will still sail long. So what we have to do in this area of the court, when the ball is lower, we have to reduce our swing speed and not go for the kill. Keep your swing speed between 50 to 80%, place the ball well, and this is how you have to handle low balls around the half court. And now you're probably thinking, Nick, how do we put the ball away from half court? Again, think of the word trajectory. If you are able to hit the ball higher and hit it more at a downward trajectory, now you can hit the ball as hard as you want because the ball doesn't have to go with an up and down type of shape. Now the ball can go straight down, very similar to a high volley or an overhead, and you can hit this type of ball as hard as you want, whether it be a forehand or a backhand.
But here's the thing, guys. A lot of you at the recreational level completely ignore hitting the ball above your waist. A lot of you guys are comfortable swinging from the waist. And when the ball gets a little bit higher, you either let it drop down or you try to take it early off the balance. And both of those options are bad when we're talking about the half court. The way you want to approach the half court is that whether you take it while it's still on the rise or on its way down, you have to manage to play the ball a little bit higher so that you can hit it with a downward trajectory. Keep in mind that the swing has to be different from your regular swing. When we talk about the forehand, generally you want to have a low to high type of swing. On a high forehand, this is not going to be the case if you want that downward trajectory to take place. What you'll have to do is either swing straight across the body like this or indeed swing high to low. Now swing high to low will depend on a lot of factors. Your body height, it'll depend on the height where you're actually taking the ball and how close to the net you are. So someone of my height, 6'5", I can take a lot of balls with a high to low type of trajectory because I'm hitting the ball at a higher level. A shorter player might not be able to do that unless they're very close to the net. Now how about the backhand? Yes, the backhand is going to be very similar to the forehand, I will say that the two-handed backhand, we're talking about high balls, is going to be a little bit easier to put away than a one-handed backhand. But one thing that I want you to understand is something that a lot of high-level players do is that when a ball is soft and it's high and it's in this part of the court, it is going to be very easy to run around that ball. So you don't really have to hit backhands from this area on a higher ball. The only time you would have to do that is if the ball is a little bit lower. And what's going to be a good option then is to hit a slice backhand approach shot. And again, we're not talking about putting the ball away with the slice backhand. We're looking to place it and then maybe put the volley away on the next shot. But if you happen to have a sitter ball, a higher ball, you have to work really hard to get around that ball and hit a forehand from the backhand side. <laughs> Another factor that makes putting balls away at the recreational level such a difficult thing is the fact that a lot of you guys suffer with ball recognition. So when you do get a short ball, you don't recognize it fast enough. And by the time you recognize it, you're scrambling up only to shovel the ball back in play. And of course, you can't put the ball away in that way. So experienced players have really good ball recognition. They recognize a floater ball much faster than you do. Now, when it comes to ball recognition, I've made many videos about this topic. And you have to be patient to develop it because the more balls you see coming your way, the better your ball recognition will become. But you have to remember that you will only have good ball recognition if you have readiness and intensity. Also, the fact that some of these shorter balls are hit in transition, this is another aspect that a lot of rec players struggle with. The fact that they have to move up to the ball. And what happens often is that they overrun the ball. So the way you want to approach half court shots is that once you recognize the ball, you have to be super explosive and make the first few steps very quick. But then when you get closer to the ball, you have to settle yourself. You kind of have to hit the brakes, position yourself well, so that you're in the right place at the right time. The worst thing that can happen to you is that you overrun a sitter ball and now you end up making contact behind. There's no better feeling in tennis than having the entire court open and having a super simple shot where you can hit it very soft into the open court. And this is still a winner. It doesn't matter if you hit it 20 miles an hour or 100 miles an hour. A winner is a winner. Now, how do you get the court to be completely open? Well, that's a whole nother subject. You have to work with the geometry of the court, with angles and open the court up and create opportunities where the entire court is going to be open for you and it's not going to require you to hit a shot of a high quality you can just stroke the ball into the open court now one player on the ATP tour that does this perfectly not necessarily by stroking the ball but rather by coming in is Rafael Nadal if you take a look at how Rafael Nadal puts away his volleys he never has to hit a hard volley when he hits a winner on the vast majority of his put away volleys the entire court is open he gently chips his volley into the open court this is what I want you to understand when you set the point up good enough then the winner doesn't have to be that difficult and guys here comes the most important part of this lesson and that is the fact that a lot of you guys ignore this part of the court you like maybe even taking some volleys and you like playing from the baseline but you ignore practicing the half court and when I teach 
players that spend at least 20 minutes of every lesson practicing the half court because here's the thing this is exactly what I started this video with I give you the scenario of hitting great baseline shots moving your opponent side to side finally getting a short sitter ball only to make that frustrating mistake the reason why you're making a mistake is because you're ignoring this part of the court in your practices so what you need to do today is start incorporating overheads high volleys and all types of balls from the half court area into your practices if you want to have any chance to start putting the ball away like the pros because here's the thing the pros wait for opportunities like this they wait for an easy overhead they wait for an easy volley they're only looking to get that sitter in a half court to finally start putting the ball away you guys are doing it the opposite way you're trying to put the ball away from difficult locations in the court especially if you're far behind the baseline in order for you to start putting the ball away with ease like the pros you need to start dedicating a lot of time of your practice to the shots that I talked about in this video 